These were the dying days of Gondwana. Africa had long ago slipped off to the west. Now India was gone too. Even at the bottom of the world, the strain between Australia and Antarctica was beginning to show. Marking the boundary between the separating continents was a rift valley, rich in forests, lakes and rivers. But this entire landscape lay within the Antarctic Circle. So close to the South Pole that in the summer the sun never set and midwinter would be dark for months on end. And that made it interesting when dinosaurs started turning up here as well. For over three decades, paleontologist Tom Rich has been on the hunt for bones of animals that lived in these primeval polar forests. There aren't many places anywhere in the world where you get polar dinosaurs, so that makes this uh, site and this area particularly important. Australia was one of the most isolated blocks of land at that time in the world. So things we might find out about this are things we won't find anywhere else. It's almost as if there's an independent experiment evolution going on here. Some of these experiments were small ornithopod species like these. Outwardly conventional, these were rare dinosaurs, thought to be permanent polar residents. Their bones lacked signs of a hibernating lifestyle, suggesting they remained active right through the long, chilly gloom of the sunless winter. But the dinosaurs weren't the only polar pioneers living in these dark forests. Some had fur. While reptiles may have ruled the world from the poles to the tropics, it's easy to forget they didn't have the planet all to themselves. There was another type of animal hiding in these prehistoric forests. They're still here, and there's one just over there. The ancestors of the platypus have been poking their mammalian noses into the billabongs and waterways of Australia for at least 120 million years. Proof is kept locked in this safe at the Australian Museum in Sydney. It's another opalized national treasure, a tiny lower jaw from an ancestral platypus. A wonderful iridescent gem recovered from a lightning ridge opal mine. Warm blooded, furry, and for the most part small, the mammals we know existed at the time could hide and hunt in the shadows of the giants. They were born survivors. It went with the territory. Like all empires, the reign of the dinosaurs was coming to an end. And they might have seen it coming if they looked to the sky. When an asteroid slammed into Mexico's Yucatan at the end of the Cretaceous, the repercussions were felt around the world. Though Gondwana and Australia escaped a direct hit, within an hour of impact, bits of pulverized Mexican seafloor flung into space began raining back down all over the planet. In places, it would have turned the sky as hot as a giant rotisserie.
No good record of this bad day on planet Earth has been found yet in the rocks of Australia. But step across to the South Island of New Zealand and you'll find hard evidence for the blanket of cosmic dust that settled over the planet. This, believe it or not, is the moment that the world changed forever. Now, it might not look like much, but this thin grey band of rock found around the world offers a remarkable window into one of the most dramatic events in the planet's history. Below this boundary lie dinosaur bones, and rising in the rocks above is a world clearly recovering from a catastrophe. The days were numbered for any Australian dinosaurs that clung on after the initial impact. A tremendous darkness, it's thought, in the form of soot, dust and smoke, settled over much of the world in the immediate aftermath, lasting months, years or even decades. Temperatures plummeted, plants withered, dinosaurs disappeared. The great lizards were gone. But the show was far from over. The tremendous calamity at the end of the Cretaceous had cleared the global stage. Though this time, not simply for the next scene, the great drama of life on Earth, but for the appearance of the Australia we know today. <laughs>